Thank you for the introduction, the invitation, and seeing this work to this stage. And I want to thank Mike for, for helping uh, set up this audiovisual setup here, and uh, Laura at the GMRC. Uh, this, uh, <laughs> this research is sort of based on my interest in the relationship between youth and, and media. Uh, traditionally, this has been looked at uh, from the perspective of the media that's produced for young people and the kind of effects uh, that it has on, uh, on them. Um, what I'm interested in is not the uh, media that's produced for young people. I'm interested in, in the kind of media that's produced by young people themselves. And uh, I, as the title suggests, I'm interested in, in a particular instance where um, uh, young people decided to communicate conflict. Uh, and the young people I'm interested in is, are, are, the, uh, are Lebanese young people. The way this presentation is, uh, is set up into four parts. Uh, the, first, <coughs> the first part, I, um, I will be setting up a, a particular context for, uh, for the discussion, going over a, a little bit of the uh, background on Lebanon and the conflict. Uh, and then I'm going to move to actually sort of map um, and sample some of the media that was produced uh, that were produced by uh, by young people uh, during that period. The third part, I will be um, uh, giving some uh, observations and remarks based on <coughs> my research last summer uh, during the time when uh, the, this conflict took place. And the fourth part is uh, up to your questions and comments, which I'm looking forward to. So uh, let's buckle up. Um, Lebanon is a very small country by uh, almost the size of uh, Connecticut. Connecticut is 5,200 square miles. Uh, its population is about 3.8 million. Uh, major languages, Arabic, French, and English are widely spoken. Adult literacy rate is about 92%. And uh, major religions are Islam and Christianity. We have about 17 sects of either Muslims or uh, or Christians, and we do have a small minority of uh, Jews. Um, as you can see on this small map, Lebanon is right there at the far eastern side of the um, Mediterranean. Uh, its neighbors are from the north and, now I'm sounding like the uh, uh, weather person, uh, the north and, and the east is uh, Syria, uh, from the south, Palestine uh, and Israel, uh, or Palestinian territories and, uh, and Israel. Um, and on the west, it's a, it's a seashore of about 140 miles, and uh, you can cross the country like east, uh, sorry, uh, uh, west to east in like about an hour, an hour and a half. Um, what you see on top right there is the Lebanese flag. The tree is the cedar tree, uh, famously known um, in, in that country. And uh, what you see underneath is the kind of media that uh, young people were involved in uh, producing during the uh, conflict. Now, uh, Lebanon has, uh, has gone through a, a period of, uh, of conflict. I have, a, I have a handout here which you can uh, uh, look into if you want to uh, dwell more into the, uh, the kind of conflicts that uh, we had during the past 60 years. But uh, what these are the interesting uh, uh, points. In 1948, uh, five years after uh, Lebanon's independence, uh, the Arab-Israeli War. 1967, the Palestinian Liberation Organization uh, conducted, operated from, from southern Lebanon, uh, sort of uh, a guerrilla, a type of a guerrilla war. Between 75 and 1990, uh, the so-called uh, Lebanese War, where Lebanese fought amongst each other with um, outside presence from, from Syrians, Israelis, and, and Palestinians. Between 1978 and 2000, uh, the Israelis occupied the southern part of Lebanon. Now, the conflict that I'm talking about is, uh, or, or started off on uh, the 12th of July, 2006, and uh, it was between um, Israel and um, uh, Hezbollah. Now, what is interesting, and I'm not going to really dwell into this uh, uh, conflict, uh, the, the, the whole background and, and why it happened, because as you will see with the kind of media that's, uh, that's being produced, the conflict itself and the rationale behind it became completely irrelevant from the young people's, uh, from the young pe people's perspective. What they cared about is that overnight, um, their country turned into, from a, a, a huge tourist destination to a um, war zone. Uh, 
Uh, the, on the morning of the 13th of July, uh, the airport was hit and the whole country, uh, sea, air, and land blockade. So they were all uh, besieged in the, in the country for about, for 33 uh, 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 days. Uh, and this is where young people started being involved in um, uh, the kind of media. Just to give you uh, an idea of the kind of um, what, what young people were, or how Lebanon was being uh, portrayed as a, as a tourist destination for, uh, mainly for Europeans. Uh, this is an ad that was shown <coughs> on European televisions. Just to give you an idea of, <clears throat> of the kind of situation that was there. Now, um, on, on July 12th, this conflict started, and uh, people were glued to their, to their TV sets. So for a very simple reason, it was, it was the most affordable uh, source, of, uh, source of information. Uh, this is a country that's uh, highly saturated by, uh, with, uh, with television. Unlike the previous conflicts that took place in the country, this was this one was broadcast live on on television. Anyone could actually could actually see where the missiles are hitting, where the conflict is taking place, uh, the kind of damaged place uh, areas. Uh, with uh, with the help of uh, six local channels, these local channels did their sort of training uh, during Lebanon's war. There were very uh, some of their employees also were very effective in the uh, in covering the Iraqi war. At least two um, pan-Arab news channels, Al Jazeera and Al Arabiya, were covering the uh, uh, the war live with their satellite trucks, and um, uh, the um, international channels who had bureaus in Lebanon or managed to uh, sneak in some of their uh, international reporters uh, were also covering uh, covering it, and people had access to that. Now, one may ask the question: Why young people were um, interested in in uh, in doing? Uh, or producing uh, media, um, I will be addressing that uh, at the at the end of the uh, at the end of the discussion. Um, now, I think it's 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 what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is sort of map out how this uh, uh, th their production of media uh, started. Uh, and in this, I will be observing two um, uh, two main aspects of this. One, how it was done both locally and globally, how people in Lebanon were producing, uh, young people in Lebanon were producing media, and how uh, young people abroad were producing uh, media to sort of uh, send out a message um, uh, about what was going on. Uh, at the same time, how it gradually evolved over the 33 uh, days. Uh, Traditionally, to voice one's, one's concern or to, or to express one's, one's opinion of what was going on, uh, demonstrations were uh, extremely, uh, started off actually uh, abroad in, in various cities uh, around the world. Um, they started off with uh, demonstrations where people would be holding uh, banners and, and um, uh, other, other forms of, um, to, carry, to carry their message. Uh, this is from, uh, from Australia. Um, the idea of the T-shirt is going to come back in, in some other uh, forms of, of media that we're going to talk about. But there were also uh, some, some public performances where this one from um, uh, Berlin. They actually uh, took one of, the, uh, one of the squares and uh, they uh, staged uh, basically dead, dead people um, there. In Lebanon, this took um, a while to actually start happening, for people to actually take the streets and demonstrate or do types of vigils. If you can imagine the situation with, with, bombs, uh, with bombs falling uh, all over the country and people 
really caring about their basic needs, about food, shelter, and, and, and water, uh, to go out in the streets became, to the, take the streets became sort of a, uh, something that's very difficult to do. Um, only towards the very last days of the, of the war when two main events uh, took place. The first one is, is Lebanon, an open, an open country for civil resistance. It basically consisted of about um, 80 cars um, uh, who uh, carried, carried about 100 or so persons and, and supplies, decided to challenge um, uh, the, sec the, the security warnings of heading down to the south. Uh, to the southern part of, the Le uh, of Lebanon, and they tried to go as far as possible carrying food and, and uh, medical supplies to, uh, uh, to refugees uh, there. Um, they didn't manage to go that far because they were, uh, they were stopped because of security reasons. They, they were told to, go to, to, um, to head back. But it was, uh, it was an, uh, an effort by, in and by itself, uh, mostly consisting of, of young people and, and, and grassroots uh, organizations. The, um, the second one is the uh, uh, 1,000 candles and lighting. The 1,000 candles um, are in, in reference to the uh, victims of that, um, uh, of that uh, conflict. And uh, this was staged in an area with, where most of the um, international news organizations um, have their offices, uh, something that would be accessible to them, that they could see, they could report on. And one has to keep in mind that that type of media that's being, uh, that's being made is sort, of, is sort of trying to attract mainstream media to report on it and, and say, well, there are people that are concerned here, and it's, the story is not just about dead people. It's also the story about... Uh, uh, people who want to live, who want to have some, some type of um, hope in, in their future. Um, interestingly enough, the, uh, the choice of the location was also, uh, was also important. The location's name is the Martyr Squares, and uh, the statue that you see there is the, uh, uh, is the one in, in, in remembrance or in the memory of the, uh, of the fallen uh, independence um, um, uh, people. Uh, the... Um, Blogs is another, is another, is another booming um, uh, area during the conflict because uh, remember what I was saying, the, people, people, uh, the young people were sitting at home, their parents were preventing them from going, uh, from, from going outside on, uh, um, uh, for fear for their safety. So they ended up, <coughs> excuse me, um, uh, going, uh, going on the net and uh, blogging. Now, these are some some uh, the, the four these four important points uh, to to note before before I review two case uh, two cases. Uh, this is the first armed conflict to be massively blocked from uh, from day one, um, and and uh, during those uh, during the bloggings, um, there was this type of a uh, open type of discussion between uh, Beirut and, and Tel Aviv. Each uh, part reporting on. Uh, their views of what was going on. This type of um, virtual communication that was taking place through uh, blog comments and, and real-time chat um, stirred some optimistic uh, reports um, in, in the Western and local media about what, type, what does that mean uh, in terms of censorship, what does that mean in terms of, the, of, the, of democracy, what does that mean in terms of the future of the, uh, of the region. But personally, what I, uh, what I feel was really important at that stage in terms of uh, from, from a media production perspective uh, and, and young, young people's involvement in that media production is that blogs transcended the, di the, the, the conventional diary or citizen journalism function, something that, that we've, we've always talked about, that blogs are, are uh, or incarnate citizen journalism, but they become a site for, for youth activism. And um, here's... Um, Here's the first uh, one, two cases. The first one comes from London. Uh, this is, uh, uh, her name is Dana Cahill. Her, uh, <coughs> her uh, blog, basically titled, I Want, I want to Go Home. Uh, she was packing up with her French husband to move after spending nine years in, in London to move back to Lebanon, um, only to, um, to wake up one day and see on the news that she can't even, uh, she can't even go there. Uh, she started off... Um, gluing, uh, glued to the set, glued to the TV set, reporting on what was, what was being reported on uh, various media 
uh, in, in Europe and whatever she can pick up in, from the Lebanese channels. She started publishing some of the emails that she was getting from her friends um, and gradually moved to start organizing particular events in, in London. What you see here to the right side is a, is a concert that uh, uh, Dana was involved in uh, uh, organizing and in promoting through, uh, through her web. Uh, but uh, she, did, um, uh, she did use that site in order to create that level of, of activism uh, there. Her blog was very simple, nothing fancy. It's just uh, links and as much as possible getting that information out, getting the word out on what was going on and mobilizing as a mobilizing tool. The, the second blog, uh, or the second blogger, his name is, uh, his no, the blog is uh, Fink Ploid. Uh, his site is blogging, uh, blogging Beirut. For those of you who are familiar, there's a various, there's a chain of various sites, blogging Beirut, blogging New York, blogging Montreal. Uh, and this, um, uh, this guy started, started it off two years ago. Uh, in 2005 as a, as a mean to promote tourism, to say that this is happening for young people, um, the kind of places to go to, the parties to attend, and, and so on. During the, uh, during the conflict, his uh, blog received about 400,000 hits a day. Uh, it was one of those really, really active bloggers. Uh, he would be going out on the streets, taking pictures um, on daily basis of, of average what's going on with normal, uh, uh, with people on the street. It provided a platform for, for pictures, accounts, and thoughts about the situation. But most importantly, it steered the I Love Beirut campaign and the uh, Blogging Beirut uh, TV. Uh, what I'll, uh, what I'll uh, remember the um, I Love Beirut campaign because I'll come back to it um, in, a, in a while. <coughs> the um, the third type of uh, media that was uh, produced is uh, video letters. Um, video letters traditionally were used as a, as a means of reconciliation between uh, two enemies. They would bring a tape from one, bring it to the uh, to the other. They'll they'll share that type of uh, that type of messages, hoping to reach some type of uh, reconciliation. Um, video letters in in this case. Uh, were used uh, for a for a completely different reason. They were either getting their it, they were used for getting the message for getting a, a simple message out, uh, saying that mostly for relief efforts, raising funds, and and um, things like that. One of the uh, one of the uh, projects which um, I was um, um, remotely involved with um, it. It was produced on, on July 21st, 2006. Um, remember, it didn't, take us, uh, it didn't take them much to actually produce this, um, uh, only about uh, 14, uh, 14 days to, uh, to turn this thing around. Um, this was uh, the, uh, the result of a collaboration between Beirut DC, which is a, a, a sort of a collective, uh, a film and cinema collective, people working in, in, the, uh, in the industry as documentaries or, or filmmakers, and, and Samidun, which is a gathering of, of grassroots um, organizations. Um, and they both um, got together to involve the, uh, to, uh, to produce the following um, video.
خمسين ألف شخص وأكلناها شي خمستاشر ألف صغور إسرائيل اختلفنا بالأول كيف بدنا نحكي معكم هل بنحكي معكم كمشاهدين عرب أو كأوروبيين المهم اتفقنا أنه مش مهم لأنه أصلا ما حدا عم يسمع ما حدا عم يسمع أنه في نص مليون مهجر نص مليون مهجر أنه في أكثر من 300 شهيد و1000 جريح أنتوا سمعتوا مثلا عن ضيعة اسمها مروحين مروحين صريفة قانا والمنصوري صدرة وشتيلة دير ياسين كفر قاسم مجزرة 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 دقيقة صمت اسمعونا منيح نحن مخاصرين وريحة الهواء برا بروت بروت والعالم عم يتفرج نحن مخاصرين لأنه العالم عم يتفرج بس المهم أو الأهم بعد في عنا شوية أكل ومي وعزة وكرامة وحب كبير نحن أربع مليون نسمة تمام أربع ملايين وواحد خلق اليوم بمدرسة تحت الحصار نحن هون أنت وين؟ A similar project was a similar project was also produced in uh, <coughs> New York uh, with a uh, group of um, artists in, in New York as part of uh, some, a project called Electronic Lebanon. This uh, project um, is part of Electronic Intifada, and another a, a U.S.-based um, uh, organization. Now, for uh, time um, for time constraints, I'm not going to show that video. And, uh, and I'm going to proceed for the fourth type of, um, of media that was um, produced at that, uh, at that point. Um, this, is, uh, this is based on, um, Mind Bomb is, is based on a, uh, a term that Dr. Downing appropriated and, and discussed the, under, it's a term that under which he, he brought together a various type, various type of, of media that's uh, that, that's produced. Uh, the purpose of, of uh, the following set of uh, examples or the following um, media that you're going to be seeing uh, is sort of the one, one could actually describe it as a <coughs> make, it's an attempt at making a potent statement. Uh, it lodges in, peop in people's conscious, uh, conscious memories. Um, it's, it's there to make a swift, sharp e effect and, and to, to, sh to, up to a certain extent, to create a shock that would be there with, um, uh, with people who are, who are using this type of uh, uh, 
media or are exposed to this, this type of media. And uh, as far as form is concerned, it's a, it's a hybrid mix of popular art with oppositional messages. Uh, it responds to specific conditions in a way it might be limited in, in terms of time. Um, and as you will see in the examples, the examples were, were limited in, in time. But during the time where they're actually uh, um, uh, there, uh, they were reproduced on um, mass scale. The first, uh, the first example is a t-shirt campaign that uh, was started off by a, an ad creative um, um, uh, professional. She used simple technology for saving, uh, for saving and printing. And basically what she, what she did was create specific designs that people can actually print out, take to their neighborhood Walgreens, print out on a t-shirt that they can actually wear during a uh, demonstration. Um, and in doing so, she used um, a, both national and and, and a global type of, of, of signifi signifiers. Um, the cedar tree that's, uh, that's there, um, at the same time, a sort of a um, um, mother and daughter, Virgin Mary-like um, um, uh, image. Uh, for, for people who are visiting Lebanon as tourists, they would have come back with a t-shirt like, um, like this. But unfortunately, they will be ending up with, a, with something that looks like this. Um, and that's, that's what I and, and many other people uh, did uh, based, on that, uh, based on that campaign. Another, uh, another campaign is um, the UN campaign, the UN in reference to the United Nations. Uh, this, is a, this, is, this was an interesting uh, experiment where, uh, where a, a group of people remained an anonymous. They launched this campaign. Um, and. It, it basically drew attention to, uh, to their frustration with, um, uh, with the United Nations, the uh, United Nations inability to stop the, um, uh, the conflict, to interfere and, uh, and stop the, uh, the conflict. Uh, the campaign came about sometime during, uh, during the war, and, and right after the end of that conflict, it's, uh, the, uh, uh, the people who are behind it, they decide to uh, to stop it because they, th they thought that it served its, its purposes. Uh, as you will see, it sort of um, mimicked um, um, the, the type of graffitis that uh, they did. It was, it was using, uh, using mimicry and, and graffiti. And um, the way this saw itself within, uh, within uh, or the way it was used as, as wallpapers, screensavers, uh, I even received a postcard uh, like that. Um, people were doing so many things with this, um, with these uh, designs that were uh, available for them. Um, the um, the last um, um, type that I'm um, discussing is uh, is the I Love Beirut campaign. Now, um, it all sounds all too familiar. It's it's basically a rip off the I love New York uh, um, campaign, which which was intended to promote New York as a as a peaceful city, as a as a hip city. Uh, this one was launched by um, Lebanon Chronicle, who's a who's a blogger in in New York. Uh, what Fink Floyd in in Lebanon did was sort of uh, steer that uh, uh, that campaign. It involved more than 25 cities around the world and was there for a very short period of time. Now there uh, there's discussion of of them bringing it back. Um, uh, this this summer as a as a way to uh, to create awareness of, of Beirut coming back again as a as a tourist site. Um, the way it worked was that they asked they provided the designs um, on the net. People were uh, were asked to um, take that design to their local kinkos, uh, print it out on on a uh, on a sort of a sticker type, uh, go around the block and start start putting these. That didn't stop there. They were actually asked to take pictures of um, uh, of where they actually posted, and uh, send it back to Fink Floyd, who would actually put it in into something like this, uh, a type of a collage of, of pictures um, that um, that sort of um, screams out San Francisco loves Beirut or or. Um, the the fourteenth sort of um, neighborhood in in Paris loves um, in Beirut. What uh, what Fink Floyd did also 
uh, which was uh, which was also uh, interesting. And if you want, during the Q and A period, we can actually see that uh, he started going around uh, going around um, the the Lebanon and um, with a small camera, having peop having young people act as VJs and present what they're doing and how they're doing uh, and what they're doing in terms of coping with the, uh, uh, with the situation. Um, we, can, we can see this uh, if you want during the uh, Q&A. Uh, to bring this all together, uh, as far as genres, we've seen uh, visuals, performances, blogs, video letters, and mind bombs. In terms of um, uh, organization, um, it, it, there's no clear-cut organization, but individuals were involved. Uh, um, some of them were professionals and some of them were, were activists. What I mean by professionals, um, uh, that they were somehow related uh, to the to media. Uh, collectives were involved, just like the uh, uh, Beirut DC or the uh, electronic uh, electronic intifada in, uh, in New York. And grassroots organizations, just like the case of uh, Samidun. Uh, in terms of uh, communication, um, what I've observed was a sort of a, a content that, that, subvertive, uh, that subverted narratives of dominant cultures. Whether those, this dominant culture is, is the adult cultures with their political ideologies, and if you remember, I suggested in the beginning that the actual conflict itself was not a, a who, why, the, why the war broke out, why there's a conflict became sort of irrelevant for, for young people. For them, it was, it was a matter of uh, um, a, a completely different, and I'm, I, I have some comments uh, on this, a completely different uh, um, uh, realm of, of expression. Um, they, they subverted stereotypes. They, they even subverted uh, uh, mainstream media by creating their own uh, their own alternatives. Uh, in terms of the formats that they uh, uh, that they used, they combined activism with with media. Uh, they used uh, various types of media in a sequential manner, um, uh, using the web, the, the 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 video camera, or or the internet and the regular camera. Um, the the whole idea of a, of a T-shirt that is that is a potent statement um, uh, out there in your face during the uh, demonstrations. Um, in terms of the conflict, um, and this is what I was getting at uh, a second ago. Um, unlike what what traditional media was involved with, which was showing the brutality and 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 the murder, the, the, the whole the whole victims and 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 the atrocities that were taking place. And, and at the same time showing um, ideological stands. Uh, the, the kind of media that, that young people produced was, was there making personal the, the, the effects of, uh, of the war, the political dimension of the war or the strategic dimensions of the war, whether they, somebody's gonna win or lose, it didn't really matter for them. For them, it was what they saw of their country being destroyed, what they saw of every day, uh, this is what they wanted to sort of stand up against. And it, it became, the, the conflict itself became an occasion for, for solidarity amongst Lebanese, Lebanese themselves, for solidarity amongst Lebanese and uh, um, uh, uh, Lebanese in the, in the uh, diaspora, a time for, for rebellion, but also a time for um, uh, hope. Um, youth, in, 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 uh, through their use of, of media, um, one would would uh, come to the conclusion that they were de deterritorial, um, and I'm using um, a sort of um, apodrized term of, of media flaws, um, going f from from Lebanon and to Lebanon. The, 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 there was no specific um, uh, location where one would say, okay, this is where the media uh, um, is, and this is where you can have access to it. It was, it was f f uh, uh, going back and forth. Uh, they used uh, national and global, uh, uh, global signifiers. Uh, they, they did not speak to just a local audience. They spoke to a global audience. Uh, it was, it was multi-territorial in a sense, creating an imagined community, speaking to young people um, inside and outside the country, uh, covering most continents. What I spoke about the uh, I Love Beirut campaign covering 25, 25 countries, most of the other campaigns popped up in various other, uh, various other countries. The, um, 
uh, T-shirt uh, that I uh, uh, showed in the beginning was from uh, from Australia, for example, and uh, they used uh, they used uh, th uh, three languages: uh, English, French, and um, the, uh, their home tongue, um, Arabic. What I would be looking at in uh, when I'm going to go back and meet with uh, some of them is to explore more why um, why they uh, why activists why activists produced media and why cultural producers uh, or professionals produced media. If there's any difference between the two, or if for that period of time, uh, just because uh, filmmakers found themselves needing to uh, to do something, and by that term became activists themselves for even for that short period, uh, the idea of why they do what they do um, is, is a very personal interest of mine. Um, what I would be, uh, what I've experienced through my conversations with many of them uh, were the following themes, the idea of uh, media giving them a type of empowerment. Uh, it's a way to attract, to, to, to attract global attention to what was going on and inform them because they, they felt a certain uh, dissatisfaction with mainstream media. Um, and, and many spoke about an idea or, or a sense of uh, impotence, a sense of boredom, because again, they were locked in their houses, or even if they went to work, there was no work to be done, um, and they were just um, there. Um, that wraps it up, and um, I'm all waiting for your questions. Thank you.